all good things must come to an end. It is over. We are 40% on the other tank. And we're losing light. <laughs> and we're losing light. Oh, we're not going that road. No, ew. Definitely not. So it looks like it got, it's a little soft maybe when it's wet. Yep. Ground does feel soft. And this feels softer here. If Sandra saw this, she'd be freaking out. We are south of the border. Because we're in Mexico. You're a lot nervous right now. I'm I'm not feeling good at all about this. Going over the wall. And, and there's, <laughs> there, I don't know, there's like 50 machine guns. We're hoping someone will bail us out. Yeah. No, we're making a run for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go, go, go. <laughs> Now, as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. Our two weeks here at Quartzsite has been fun, but it is over and time for us to roll on down the road. Mickey and Minnie, Time for you to take your safe place while on the road. Everything is buttoned up, including the refrigerator, and I taped the cabinet. Nothing on the countertops. It looks like we are good to go. Hi everyone. Welcome, Hello. welcome to the channel. We are heading south. Uh, finished with Quartzsite. It was a good show. Oh, it was awesome. I loved it. It might have been a little expensive, though. I think it was probably the most expensive quartzite show for us. Oh, yeah. I think this is the first time we actually bought something of significance. Yeah, going to Yuma mm -hmm. and going to do more boondocking. Yeah, so I need to pull my tracker out because we just did two weeks of boondocking in quartzite. Yep. Now, I call that baby boondocking because we have... <laughs> You know dump and fill available and right. then before that we were traveling out here so that was a couple of weeks but now we're doing big boondocking because it's going to be 10 days 10 days no, no dump, and, dump fill. and fill so that's like 25 26 days of boondocking straight yeah but having to watch stuff that's true but because it's yuma we're going to be going to Los Algodones yeah. quite a bit, yeah, probably. So, so we're not going to be staying at home for very much. We'll, and we're not going to be cooking a lot because we're going no, to be eating, eating a lot. shrimp tacos yeah. down there. So, I'm, I, man, I'm so looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of, it's been two years. Oh, man, it has been two years. And we'll get some dental done at Los Algodones. Yeah. Need to get that done. Yep. So, we're heading to Yuma and... Into Yuma <laughs> and uh, more sun, more solar, and I might actually be able to get a short sleeve shirt on. Yeah, that's right. We'll document that. Yeah. It's like we are caravanning down the road. There's one, two, three, four, five, six RVs in front of us. It's a popular road right now. Yes. And by the way, it is not ST. AA approved for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, if you look at the Trucker's Atlas, it's it's not approved. Nope. But it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Not only are there a lot of people on this road, <laughs> Highway 95 to Yuma, but when we were leaving the 
BLM there in Quartzsite. Wow. There was a lot of people there dumping were. at the dump station. Yeah. Line. I well, mean, yeah. So today's the last day. It's Sunday. It's the last day of the show, and I think everyone's just heading out, going on to their next stop. Yeah. But there was a long line, so I got water because there was no line for water. Yeah. Plus, but, we got to talk to Randy for a while, and that yep, was fun. That was nice. But man, there was a line at the at the dump station, so we did not avail ourselves of the uh, dump station. No. Uh, and and today. we're we're full because David told me he needed me to fill the uh, gray tank, so <laughs> I did multiple loads of laundry. Oh yeah, we're definitely full, so <laughs> yeah. we'll find a place in Yuma uh -huh. to dump before we head out to our uh, site to uh, dry camp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so in case you're wondering why I am just videoing the sky, you can't see it up there, but somewhere up there, I can see it, is a blimp of some sort. And we always thought maybe it was a weather station, but it's not. It's Border Patrol. And that thing apparently is loaded down with all kinds of radar and everything. And it's, I think it's, I don't know if it's tethered or not, but every time we come down this highway, um, we see them up there. Yeah, I think it's tethered. Yeah. I want to say one time I took a picture of it and it looked like it had been tethered. Yeah. Kind of interesting that it's this far, I'll say, from the border. Yeah. But obviously... We're not that far from the border. No, we're not. We're 30 miles or so. Yeah. And maybe up through this area there have been maybe aerial sightings mm -hmm. well, we just entered into california and the uh, GPS, gps has said we are now in pacific time which meant we just gained an hour you owe me another hour no i could have slept in another hour no now today this week i don't owe you another hour because we're going to be going back to Yuma from our camping site, okay. and that's in Arizona time. True. And Los Algodones that we're going to be visiting probably once or yeah. twice. and it's in Yuma time as well. Exactly. Even though it's in the California Pacific time zone, it's in on Yuma time. Exactly. So we're going to stay on Yuma time for this almost week that we're going to be here. So even though we're in California. Even though we're in California, we're going to stay on Arizona Yuma yeah. time. But when we leave Yuma, then I'll switch the clocks. Okay. And now. we'll account for that so you can actually get your hour on that day. Okay. But because we're in California, we're having to adjust our speed limit because the speed limit in California for anything towing is 55 miles an hour. So we're going to, actually, we're going to lose an hour because it's going to take us an hour longer <laughs> to get someplace, well, I think. Good thing it's only about six miles yeah. uh, inside the border. So exactly. I think we're, I think we're good. Mm -hmm. But our fuel economy will increase. Oh, significantly. <laughs> We are going through the California Agricultural. Goes oh, it says right. cars and RVs to the left. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go this oh, way. Oh, what are we? Where are we? <laughs> Which way? Which way? I'm going to go this way. Hi. Good? Th thank you. She just... Uh, flag you on or yeah no we're making a run for it <laughs> yeah. go 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 i am trying <laughs> yeah she just uh waved us on. on yeah just waved us on okay. like, so there keep you going. have it oh my goodness look at all those rvs out there yeah that's what i was kind of worried about Kind of spread out though. Oh, yeah. there's a train. Can we get over that hump? Turn right on Tucker Road. Yeah. Yeah. That is a long, Man. long train. No kidding. So the time we made <laughs> up. Good thing you packed lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I might to, go get it. Yeah, I may need to break out the sandwiches. 
So tell me about this BLM area. Just the claim to fame to this is it's a little closer to the border, uh, to Los Algodones and to Yuma. And uh, it's just more BLM desert camping. So, you know, it's just a, another area. But yeah. it's a little closer, and I but think that's why. But it's something different. Something different. Yeah, we haven't been here before. Right. <laughs> I see all the RVs, but how in the heck did they get in there? Uh, it looks like there's a... That's not it right there, is it? That little ditch thing? I guess that doesn't look too bad. You can get out and look, or you can get the drone to get out and look. You may get the drone to get out and look, but I'm going to come up here to this other spot and... Uh, Just kind of see... Yeah. Looks like there's lots of little roads. Because yeah. if you look further up, it almost looks like driveways. Yeah, so that's what I was, uh, that's where I got us tagged was all oh. these what look like, they're not pads, but they look like they used to be like an RV park. Or oh, no a, kidding. Yeah, or something, but it's it's almost like a shadow in the desert. Huh. Wow, look at that Ocotillo. It is green. Very green. Oh, man, they must have had some water here. Yeah. Looks like there might be another big entrance up there, too. I think you should get the drone out. Take off. All right, little drone, go do your job. Find us a nice place. So this was the original purpose of getting a drone well over eight years ago we started full-timing. If we were a little hesitant to go into some place, David could go scope it out. Now what about further north down the road? So there's a lot of open space mm -hmm. right off this road. Does it look like it has rocks though to help minimize the dust in case it gets no, it looks like this stuff right here. Well, that's rocks, though. Dust mitigation? Gravel? Yeah, I mean, it's got some, but it's light-colored, so uh -huh. I don't think it's a lot. There's a few people up there. Where are you? Way up there? Way up there. So it, it's... Yonder? Uh, yeah, so it fl looks flat. Looks like it's got some, you know, rocks to mitigate dust. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, no. And um, it's white truck just pulled in and he didn't bounce too much. Yeah, and that's about where... Battery level is low. Uh-oh. Aircraft will return to the home point in 10 seconds. So where he went in, that's mm -hmm. where we're going to go. Oh, okay. Oh, where to park? Oh, we're not going that road. No, ew. Definitely not. How's the ground? Does it feel pretty soft or? Uh, no, it feels pretty. I mean, you it's. Know, I just realized I'm not. Soft, firm. I'm not freaking right now with because of the tandems, the drive. Oh, I feel. That's true. I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. This, so this is what it's supposed to feel like. All right. I don't know. What do you think? Well, let's, <clears throat> um, let's kind of get out and look. And see. Yeah. So it looks like it got. It's a little soft, maybe when it's wet. Yeah. It's not supposed to rain for a couple of days. So the ground does feel a little soft right here. I'm it's just going up to the high ground. Yeah. The ground does feel soft. And this feels softer here. Social distancing at its best. All right, well, I thought I got everything off the countertop, so that apparently not. Thank goodness it was a smooth ride today. All set up for our week's stay in Yuma. Should be nice and quiet. Go visit Mexico and get some good food and a little dental.
I got all set up yesterday afternoon and what's one of the first things we do when we come to Yuma? Shrimp tacos. <laughs> <laughs> we go to Los Algodones. Not only for dental. Well, for shrimp tacos, then dental. Well, that's true. <laughs> Got to get your priorities straight. Yes. We're going to take you across Mexico and kind of see uh, what's going on uh, south of the border. All right, we're driving in. I don't know. Are we? Uh, we are now. <laughs> the point we, of no return. We, we just missed the last uh, exit off this road. It's a lot easier to get into Mexico than out. Oof. Oh man. I don't know how easy it is. These are <laughs> big humps. Oh my goodness. Oh man, they have added. They've added some. They sure have. And, uh, <laughs> are you going to be able to get through? I don't know. I wasn't planning on four wheel driving <laughs> into Mexico. <laughs> Wow. Oh, wow. Okay, uh -huh. they have made some enhancements to border security. Mm-hmm. We've gotten all parked. We're here in Los Algodones. On to tacos. A lot of vendors here in Los Algodones, but it is definitely, we've said this before, it's definitely the Disney of Mexico. Extremely safe. Uh, everyone's very, very friendly. Friendly. Yes, yeah. very friendly. And they will let you know what they're selling and that it is almost free. But they... Uh, it's not pressure. But it's not pressure. They ask one time, you say no thank you, and then they just back off. Exactly. But yeah. they want to make you aware of what they are selling. <laughs> so along with all these vendors, obviously, a ton of pharmacies and a optical. lot of, uh, yeah, optical and also dental, of course. That's a claim to fame here, is the dental. Lots of nooks and crannies. You've got the main passageways where the vendors are. And you also have these buildings where you can go inside. Now, behind me, and we're going to test it, is a bakery that they say is the same bakers that we used to have here several years ago. But they moved out because a dental office moved into their little corner spot. But to this year, uh, there's a new bakery and they've opened up uh, inside. So we got a bear claw, apple bear claw. We're gonna test it, see if it's the same. If it is, we're coming back. <laughs> All right. I was worried. It's <laughs> Just been two a little years. worry, but it's a different person. It is. Oh my. Maybe it's his son or something. Maybe. Carrying on the tradition. All right, but it smells the same. <laughs> that was tasty. All right, let's walk around. We need to. All kinds of little back alleys. Different ways to get where you want to go. Okay, we got to show you something. We get a lot of comments on the channel about our stained glass window in the door. And we got it here from Los Algodones and it's in the um, Plaza Alvaro. All right. Come on, it's like a secret passageway. <laughs> secret. Excuse me. I have no idea how we found this place. We just started <laughs> wandering. And, As we are wont to do. And then we saw these and 
this guy, all this stuff is hand done and they have a huge selection and then you just have to go through all of these different things. And what's really cool is they have these um, frames for your RV. So you can actually, and they have two different frames, two different sizes. Now they don't sell no, they don't. the <laughs> RV frames. No, they don't. But you can match how large your window opening right. is in your door. Exactly. Now it, it it's not the easiest to install. Um, it takes two it's people. It's not bad. It's not bad. You've gotten really good at it because you've installed like eight or ten of them <laughs> with some of our friends and stuff. Just so everyone knows, I'm not in that business, all right? Not in the business of installing stained glass RV door windows. But he does dryers. <laughs> yes, about six or eight times. So we love this place. I mean, the prices are reasonable. I mean, you're not going to get a steal because these are all hand done. And, and what's really nice is that they're done on both sides yes, of yes. the frame. So you have this side, but also the other side right. as well. And that was really important to us. So we could see the window from the beginning, from the inside and the outside. Exactly. It doesn't so, look cheap on the inside. It right. looks just the same. Right. So um, we'll get the guy's card and he can, uh, you can do your magic. I'll flash that up. Yeah. So anyhow, this is where we got it. Um, Secret reveal. Secret reveal, but I hate to say we actually have like two or three of them. Yeah. <laughs> so we can change them out. That was the plan. All right. Oh, no, thank you. Another this little alcove. This is new. So this is so cool how all these, that you have all these little alcoves, um, mostly full of dentists. <laughs> yeah, it's they're... like there's always a dent, you know, a bunch of dentists and then something to eat or drink. And an optometrist. Yes. And possibly a pharmacy. All right, so our first day in Los Algodones was successful. It was one of several. Yes, so we got uh, our dental appointment done. Shrimp tacos. Oh, I ate too many. <laughs> I ate for taste. Yeah, yeah, I think we always do. But we'll be back in a couple of days, but uh, this will be it for today. Nice to walk around and reacquaint ourselves again with this part of Mexico. Ah, oh, the joys of boondocking. Orion is peeing. So the dilemma, when I'm filling our system, if I don't catch it right away before the water starts coming out of the vent, I can create a vacuum in there because we have steel or stainless steel tanks for our water. That happened when we filled yesterday. It's still got a vacuum in there. It's still pouring water out. We don't want to lose five, no. six, eight gallons. We don't know how much. So Sandra came up with a great idea. Aw, thank you. Yeah, and I'm giving her credit because if it doesn't work, <laughs> it's her fault. <laughs> Shame on you. So we've got a hose. It's physics. Yeah. So I got a hose pad. I've got this adapter. I'm going to put it on the uh, drain of the. Uh, of... What are you doing with that adapter? Yeah. So I got oh a drain gosh. on the. Uh, put that on the uh, drain, and then we'll capture it. <laughs> and then we'll put it into our collapsible bladder. And that way we won't lose any water. No, because we don't want to lose a drop of that. Exactly. Was that the, the piece of plumbing that you bought for the sewer tank? <laughs> yes, it was. Now you haven't like tried to attach it to the sewer tank, have you? Have on not. the truck? Okay. I have not. So it's still clean. Still clean has not been used for anything. Thus, we can use it here. All right, so the, the drain system didn't work. <laughs> Sandra got a little wet. Oh, I am, I shouldn't even, but I don't know why I took a shower and stuff, and I don't Really, know. she now got I'm one out here. So yeah. Idea, I guess I get All right, one. but you get an A for having a good idea. 
So now we're just going to dump it into a tub. And then use and, that for the toilet water or yep, something. Yep. We can make it used for other things. Yeah. Man, it is just pouring out of there. I told you. Wow. Well, we need to stop it. It's getting ready to spill over. We have some food handler totes. So hopefully that'll be enough. Oh my gosh! That's like four cups of water! Man! Alright, well David has improved upon my idea. He's gotten the water pump out, and then now we are sucking the water out of these um, food handler thingies. Containers. Containers. And then I guess once we get these containers empty, you're going to put it underneath the vent. Yep. And we'll see if it vents faster. Okay, so is the huh. water going to vent faster than the pump can pump? Or is the pump going to be able to keep up with it? Inquiring minds want to know. How much uh, water can a water pump pump when a... <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ryan is peeing faster than the pump can pump. Yeah. Quite a bit faster. But I've adjusted the flow to account for the speed of the pump, so it's kind of... Well, that was a smart idea, so you're not having to yeah. change it. Yeah, so... All right. Try to relieve the vacuum, save the water while we're boondocking. Because we've got nine more days. Nine more days. Mm. And nine more gorgeous nights. I just checked the water and we're at 100% on one tank and we are 40% on the other tank. And we're losing light. And <laughs> we're losing light. But all we're doing is draining tank two. But the question is, how are we draining tank two from tank one through the vent? So we got the pressure out of the system, right? Yeah. Vent's open, it stopped draining. We relieved the vacuum in our front tank by shutting the valve, the vent off on our second tank. And then it started to, I could hear the tanks kind of boom, boom, sort of imploding a little bit. And then this started to stop, the flow did. So then I opened that valve back up and then I could hear the tanks popping again. Oh, it had air. a big pop. That, yeah. That's what I wish I boom. recorded. And then I hit our transfer switch <laughs> back into the tanks to relieve any air that was in that part of the system. And then it finally started to equal out. And that's and now we have a full bladder that we have to pump, pump back, back into, into our tanks. system. Oh my! And it's getting dark. Okay. Oh, but it's so pretty. Crisis averted. Crisis averted. Woo! All right, now I gotta switch these hoses. <laughs> gotta flip everything around. Flip everything around. Pump it back in. Don't create a vacuum this time. Yeah, really. An RV has several key systems, especially when you're boondocking, but really anywhere. You know, your power, your water, sewer, those are really key. Well, for us, another key system <laughs> is the soda fountain system. And if Sandra saw this, she'd be freaking out. That's right. That's the CO2 in the red zone. I've pulled it out. It's time to find a place to get uh, CO2 refills, which so far every town we've been in just about, we've never had an issue with that. And here in Yuma, there's another place where I can exchange this. So that's pretty nice. So it's a little bit of an errand day today. And this is gonna be one of the errands. So I did mention that we were running some errands today. Well, Hobby Lobby for Sandra is one of those errands. Uh 
Behold the breath of fresh air from artificial flowers. All right, we're going to the most important stop of the day. Yeah, the reason why we actually <laughs> drove into town. That's right. It's a welding supply store. You don't even know how to weld. <laughs> I really don't, but I spend more time at a welding supply than probably anywhere. Mm -hmm. Put this on the car and then I'll be right in. Sounds good. Thank you. Oh, this thing's. Oh, I can't hear this in the one I did. Took out. <laughs> Need to find a composite CO2 cylinder. That'd be nice. That'd be real nice. All right, All right gotta go pay. All right, the important. Errand is out of the way. We got CO2, so Sandra can breathe Hobby easy. Yeah. <laughs> and Hobby Lobby, let her chill and meditate. And now, it's Walmart. A little RV hack that Sandra thought of, and I'm gonna get the cart and Sandra can tell you what that hack is. We're in a uh, pack in, pack out BLM area here in California. And when we do that, then this is how I manage our trash. Well, obviously I save the recycling, but um, what we do is I put all the stinky trashy stuff in this trash bin. And this is just like for bulky things, milk jugs and stuff like that. And then uh, whenever we go into town, then we only take the small bag because um, we just don't want to take, you know, like a really big white trash bag and try and dump that somewhere. Let's go. Where are you going? <laughs> Sandra's on the hunt for particular items and she just goes like crazy in the store. the deal we ran out of honey the other day and we needed some and I didn't know if we were gonna come back so I went ahead and bought some over in Los Agadones and it was a and good I, price it was because I'd never bought honey over there before but it's like half the price over there yeah. so I'm gonna start getting my honey over in uh, Los Agadones all right she's talking about the bee kind of honey not like another kind of honey oh, okay. I'm her other honey <laughs> All right, back from our chores and errands. So I'm going to offload the CO2 tank and I will place it uh, in its nice little secure holder, uh, connect it to the uh, pressure gauge, turn it on, and let Sandra enjoy a fresh bubbly Diet Coke. I need to get me by 
Okay, uh, what in the world are you doing on the floor okay. tracing a this shadow? This is how cool geometry is. Oh, Lord. So, I'm tracking where the angle of the sun with the solar panels along with how much amps the batteries were getting. And so now I'm kind of tracking where the sun is. And since this line is parallel with the side of the trailer, which is parallel with the solar panels, and I know that when the sun comes in, that that is the true angle of the sun on the solar panels. You so. are such a geek. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> okay, what? what is that buzzer well, it's, going off? You know me, I always do that to remind myself of something. Oh yeah, that's but at right. The, the beginning of every big boondocking stay, um, I track solar uh, production every 15 minutes. So not only do I track where the angle of the panels are, but I also track where we're at so we can kind of know as a baseline, basically. Oh, that's right. So you so, put that in uh, yeah. Orion's uh, Bujo. Yeah, so right now we're only getting 63.5. So behind me is the solar central. Uh, when we're boondocking, especially out in the desert, or really anywhere, and we like to try to stay off the generator, keep it nice and quiet in the environment where we're in. And behind me is uh, where all our panels are and our monitors. And that's what Sandra's doing right now. Come here, come here. This oh, is so cool. Wait a second. All right, so, ah. so this is where, and I, I labeled this wrong, it's backwards. So this is every, by hour, every 15 minutes, and I write it in. And usually in the summertime, we get to 100% like this, whole block and that's really cool and then i track what our morning and evening state of charge is when you put up and down the panels how much we harvest the sun the temperature uh, if we run the generator um, all of our water situation like we take showers and stuff and then come back here get closer look they want to see this is cool this is cool stuff this is such geek stuff Shush. but it is it's cool and then every day I track by hour what our state of charge is, assuming we're here. Now, obviously, um, we're not always going to be here. J again, just to say, okay, how are we on track with the previous day and did we survive that day? And then just any general notes of what happened for the day. Okay. So, so generally speaking, I can sum it up by saying she's completely geeking out on the solar thing but it is kind of interesting to see where we stand. And he uses it, he looks at it. Yeah, just a little. New morning is a good morning, especially before the sun. But we have a 8.30 dental appointment. So I think we're one of the first ones here. <laughs> Which and is unusual for yes, us. And today we decided that we are going to park and walk because we're going to be done hopefully by about 11 between dental and breakfast and the lines will probably hopefully be shorter this express lane and also overnight Hi. walking in is just a slightly different experience it's not as bumpy <laughs> so we're uh Heading into uh, Mexico. Oh, you got your passport? Yes, I do. All right. Thank you. Oh, I'm full. <laughs> so the, the one of many pounds I'll be gaining this week. We went to one of our other favorite places because mm -hmm. it was a little early after our yeah. dental appointment. So it's Molka's and this is definitely off the beaten path and, <laughs> and so I counted everybody that was in there and it's half locals and half tourists but these are usually not first time tourists. It's people who've been here multiple times but... That's right, this is several blocks yeah. off the main area. Yeah, but it's, oh my goodness, that the food is really, really 
really, really good. good. My, my favorite is the chilaquiles, um, which is good because the, the tomatoes are real stewed tomatoes, oh. not just flat out of a can. Exactly, it's uh, just the right the, amount of seasoning. I had eggs and you had pork, I had pork. on yours. Oh, and pork was that tender. Pork was unbelievably tender. Really good. We're gonna go and maybe get some bear claws from the bakery. And apple fritters, and but apple not fritters? for today. <laughs> no, because we're full. Very full. So we're gonna head on and uh, see if they've got any left. Yeah. Let's see if they've got them. Oh, Ooh, that looks like they do. All right, that can be dangerous. This is what's dangerous. I came prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're bad. <laughs> People come here for dental, mm -hmm. optical, pharmacy, and good food. Good food, yes. <laughs> but when you come in, there's literally over 300 dentists. Easily. And maybe that many pharmacies. <laughs> yeah, and and the the dental services is you know not we just came so we just came to get our teeth cleaned and get yep. our annual checkup and everything and. Yep. Um, so for cleaning and full set of x-rays and an exam, it was $40 each. Um, Which now, is pretty good. Right. And then everyone's pretty much the same price. So yeah, cheap dental, but good quality dental. Um, so they said like crowns are like, what, $300? $300, $300 uh, uh, for a crown. and A root canal is 800 can't remember. I can't remember. And then implants, I think, are about 1500 to 2000 But the thing that I've noticed, we've been coming here for over seven years. This is like our seventh year, which is hard to believe. <laughs> and really? I think it's getting, it's definitely expanding. And, you know, the, the whole town is expanding. And the number of dentists now doing more of the technical things like implants and root canals, yeah. that is definitely expanding. Um, really? Before there was just a handful and now there's just a whole bunch. It seems and like almost everyone does it. There's a lot to choose from here. There is. We've 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 had a good experience. So, we have. We've been to know. two different dentists now and we've just tried this one and yeah. been, been really happy with both of them. Now the optical though, um, I had some glasses about yeah. four or five years ago and they were okay by the time you, yeah. know, you get the transitions and the scratch and all that other stuff. It's about the same as what you could get at Sam's yeah. and Costco. We and didn't find that the price was better. That, that better it wasn't. No. Um, and then the pharmacies here is it's ridiculous. Um, oh yeah. Now we're not on any pharmaceuticals, but you know we have friends that are, and you know yep. we'll come and. <laughs> Sometimes we'll ask if they need anything. Yeah. And, and we'll get uh, a should few, we say that? Uh, we'll, we'll get a few runs. items for them, but. <laughs> uh -huh. Nothing for us, but it's yeah, uh, it's but amazing the price to, difference. Yeah. Here. It's an amazing place for that. Yeah. If you need that. Right. But we come for the dental and, and donuts. for donuts <laughs> and good food. Yeah. So we're gonna, I think, uh, head back across the border mm -hmm. and um, kind of call this a day. Yeah. So if you walk into Mexico. You gotta walk out. out. Yeah. And, and you can't get a fast pass like at Disney. <laughs> yeah, that just doesn't work. So uh, they've changed things a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you actually have to kind of go towards the end of the line to get in line, which makes sense. But we're uh, heading there now to stand in line and <laughs> oh, excuse head me. back out of the country. Bless you. <laughs> Here we go. So the line's not too bad. They've added uh, covers, which is nice. And so a little bit of shade here for everybody, which is really nice in this hot sun. But the line is not long at all right now. All right, they let us out of Mexico. Woo, back yeah. in the USSA. Woo, USA. <laughs> It's USA. I'm thinking the Beatles. Man, I almost thought you were going USSR for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're heading home. Got a short drive. I don't know if I'm ready for lunch. No, oh, I won't be ready for dinner. <laughs>
One of our last days here in Yuma, Sandra comes out of the door. It's like windy and cold. It's kind of windy right now, yeah. So we're gonna go to, uh, she wants to get in the sun. Yeah. We're, we're gonna go to Los Algodones. One last time. One last time, last time on this trip. So yeah. we enjoy it, but yeah. I'm not enjoying the scale though. A little breezy. Oh yeah, the scale. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not talking about musical notes. <laughs> so on our way into Mexico, we're less than half a mile from the border. So we, we got to kind of make this one quick. Very. But you were talking about how green it looked outside. Yeah, so it rained yesterday. Well, you know, the desert's version of rain. And yeah. there's just this like, really really light hint of green everywhere yeah i mean like these little itty bitty sprigs of grass but it's, it's pretty cool to see that but it's the desert so you don't yeah. expect that but the desert really comes alive mm -hmm. in the springtime mm -hmm. so uh pretty neat but, can't wait to see the flowers yeah so but we're getting close to the border now so we gotta turn this thing off aloha <laughs> we'll catch you on the other side well, we made it across the border and we are in Mexico. And just a little backstory. I'm a little nervous right now. Not because we're in Mexico. You're a lot nervous right now. I'm I'm not feeling good at all about this. So I'm recording every bit of it. So <laughs> if we go to jail or get shot, then we're hoping someone will bail us out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, better, I guess I better upload this first. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but or confiscate um, the camera. So David went online and he read through all the regulations about flying a drone in Mexico. That's right. And we're legal because we're it's legal. under 249 grams. Right. And we're not going to violate any U.S. airspace. U.S. or Mexico border airspace. That's so right. So the wall is just right there. Nobody either whether you're in mexico or in the u.s or vice versa nobody is allowed to fly a drone up and over the wall that's right that's violating like both every, airspaces every federal law there is i think that's exactly right so this stay away from the border this bad boy's not going over the wall and, and there's <laughs> there i don't know there's like 50 machine guns probably not even yeah. a couple hundred yards from us all right so we'll we'll see. Oof. So when that thing gets shot down and I want to get your expression. <laughs> well, they're gonna have to be a pretty good shot to get this bad boy. Oh, and by the way, you guys have been absolutely amazing with the suggestions on the names of the drones. So David's still going through all the comments. There's like 200. Yeah, we haven't decided on the name yet, yeah. but um, we're we're liking uh, the top two candidates uh -huh. is uh, Discovery and Ingenuity. Yeah, but I like Cosmo because that just sounds cute. But this guy's ugly and mean, so that he, just doesn't apply. He's not ugly and mean. He is. He's just... Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's I can't say he's mean. cute. He's not cute. He's like a, like a wasp and he's like, Take off. Los Algodones, it's, we love this place. We brought our regular bikes over here, I don't know, about four or five years ago and just rode all over the town. We got lost and it was just wonderful. Um, the roads aren't totally grid, so we went down this run road and we thought, oh, we'll go around the block. Well, the block was like two miles around. The people are super nice and it's almost like this community where I don't think any one busker who's offering the dental works for a specific dental office. I, I almost want to say they work for the town and, um, and they're going to help you out. They're going to refer you, yeah, to their friends. Um, but if you're looking for something different, like, you know, we always ask, well, what Return about the bakery? Home. Where's the ice cream? Um, you know, the important things, <laughs> tacos. <laughs> I'm seeing, I'm sensing a theme here. Yes, yeah, a great restaurant. But they're just really friendly here. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. So the drone is returning home unscathed. Yes. It's a little windy outside, so how did it do? Uh, it did great. Did great, nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. Looked really good. So 
very pleased with the performance of whatever we name them. Yeah. So Sandra is in a quandary right now for a couple of different reasons. Now we're here sort of in the main intersection in Los Algodones. The quandary is one, this is our last day, so we want to hit two of our favorite places to eat. Well, we're not really hungry. Yeah, we're not hungry yet. <laughs> not yet. Oh, and then I found a tamale guy. Yeah, over so there by the I parking. Might, I might get that on the way out. Yeah, but the second quandary that she's in is that normally she's on the hunt for something when we come down to Mexico. Yeah, usually our friends give us a list of stuff to get. That's but right. Or the grandchildren or the need something. And well, nobody like, needs anything. Yeah, it's like we're free. But she feels like when we're down here, she's like, man, I feel like I've got to get something. I know. <laughs> so we'll I'm walk find around. Something. She'll probably find something. Mm -hmm. So we'll walk around and we'll. We'll, we'll see, something. we'll find something. Hey, Kendall, hey, paparazzi right here! Yeah! She's famous! She's famous! She's on TV. Oh, nice tomatoes, I like those. No, we're good, thank you very much. Sandra's trying to find... A pegatina. Which is a sticker. <laughs> they don't have them down here in Mexico, or no, at least in Los Algodones. But, but one of the guys suggested going to the candy store. That's right. So the grocery store. We're getting ready to head in there. Let's see if they know what a pegatina is. This is more than a candy store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing any stickers. All right, so, but you gotta ask. Let's see if they know what it is. Oh, you gotta ask. 85 pesos? Wow, for a bag of chia seeds. For this huge bag. Can we, well, we can't take seeds back in the U.S., I don't think. I don't think so. Now, if we brought those back, I could use it to grow hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need something. Tiene una pegatina. Pegatina? Es para niños. Oh, plastilina. Um, um. Manual. Um. She's striking out. Conoce a donde aquí de los algodones? Two block, two block, and coach spring. Okay, gracias. Dos cuadras, dos cuadras, and across the street. <laughs> We're gonna get our steps in today. Oh, yes we are. All right, folks, we are definitely not in downtown Los Algodones any longer. The search for a sticker is taking us to definitely the local area of Los Algodones. This does not look like <laughs> a sticker area. No, but I bet they have stickers in there. I bet <laughs> these kids use stickers. So Maybe. I asked the guy and I was trying to explain what a sticker was. And I said something like for little kids. <laughs> And he said, okay, he yeah. heard the word kids. And this is all in my very poor Spanish. So he goes, two blocks, two blocks. And it's like, okay. So, so he directed us to the local escuela. For kids. For children. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're going to head back? Yeah. Yeah, because well, this is closed. It is. But, you know, if we went inside, they might have some stickers. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Well, we now where the local school is. <laughs> That's right. We are a little more educated now <laughs> <laughs> about Los Algodones. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Come on. <laughs> My goodness gracious. I know. Morpus is busy. All right. Wow. There's a table in the back corner. Though. All right, that sounds good. Let's do it. So we're heading back to the car. The line was pretty long for the walk-in. Pedestrians, yeah. Yeah, for the pedestrian side. So we're gonna see what the car side is like. All right, if all goes well, we will see you on the other side. All right, so we were doing some planning. We normally, before our next stop, we always look at the weather, kind of plan our days and activities and what we're gonna do. 
Well, our next stop is going to be Joshua Tree, California. Well, the atmospheric river is coming through and going to hit California. Gee, like the three days that we were planning on being in Joshua Tree. Whereas where we're at currently in Yuma, it's only one day that's going to be rainy. The rest of the days are going to be either sunny or partly sunny. So it's kind of a no-brainer, but Sandra's having issues because of the Bujo journal. Yeah, so we were writing everything in and planning, but the problem is last night I went ahead and set up next week for Joshua Tree. <laughs> and I can't undo it. It's all glued in. So. So she's struggling with whether we stay in a nice weather area or whether we go with the Bujo in a look bad how weather area. My planner is. <laughs> and it's for Joshua Tree. The right thing to do is to stay here. Out of the weather. Out of the weather. So I I can. I can make it work. We can do Joshua Tree later in the week. Yeah, I'll make it work. This is why you always plan in pencil. <laughs> so it's a nice breezy day before the rains come. We're going to take a little bike ride and check out the area. See if uh, for the future, see if there's any other places that we may want to camp. But we've got to look out for the easy access for Voyager and Orion. Right, checking out a few sites on our ride. I don't think that's acceptable. It's called the mound. Yeah, no. We'll we'll keep going. You okay? Because I think I got that on video. You didn't get me falling down. Oh, I think I got everything on video. And if I did, it's going in there. <laughs> you definitely know it's going in there. But you're okay? <laughs> Nothing hurt? A little pride, maybe? The soda! The soda saved oh, the soda! Saved the soda. <laughs> Ground's a bit soft. <laughs> I can't get up. <laughs> Help her! She's falling and she can't get up! <laughs> oh. I think I ate all those tacos. I've got a lot of cushion on my booty. <laughs> 